All right, so now we can look at the other determinant of the tax burden. So again, what you see, I've drawn two graphs, and they have the same equilibrium okay, initially. And now what we want to do is see what the effect, again, is of a tax. Okay, so let's start with the graph on the left. Okay, so the same reduction in terms of the quantity. Price buyers pay, going up. And the price sellers receive, going down. Okay, so again, let's take this same tax and basically apply it onto this graph. All right, and so what do we notice in this case? Okay, what we notice now is again, looking at it, we notice that the tax, in terms of tax burden, here is more on the sellers. Okay, we notice here, price sellers receive goes down by more than it does here. Here it only goes down by a very small amount. Here though, it goes up by a rather larger amount. Okay, and so what do we notice is the difference here? Well again, now, or should I say what's different from before, now the demand curve is actually the same for both graphs. So what's different? What's different is the supply curve. Here we see that it's steep. Here we see that it's flat. Okay, and so what does that mean? Remember if it's flat, this means that the supply is elastic, right? More responsive, the quantity supply is more responsive to changes in price as opposed to here where the supply is inelastic. Okay, so when the supply is inelastic, the burden on the sellers is greater. Okay, so that's what we can do and we can write, we can write this down. So the more, the more inelastic the supply, I guess I should be parallel here. The more inelastic the supply, the greater the burden the tax on the sellers. Okay, so the more inelastic the supply, steeper, the greater the burden of the tax on the sellers.